Hey, it's Lou, and here's the thing. When I first started covering tech five or six years ago, 3D printing was all the rage. Back then, some entrepreneurs and analysts in the space predicted a 3D printer would soon be a staple in every household, as ubiquitous as microwaves. According to the zealots, these futuristic devices would democratize manufacturing, creating an industrial revolution 2.0. Or, as the October 2012 cover of Wired put it, this machine will change the world. Yeah, not so much. That guy on the cover of Wired, he had to lay off half his workforce. Rival companies face similar downsizing, and anecdotally, I don't know anyone who owns a 3D printer, and I know some bona fide nerds. Yet, it turns out that the 3D printing revolution might still have a chance. We were just looking in the wrong place. All that hype I just talked about, plus the TED Talks and the Colbert Report appearances, these centered on 3D printers as consumer products, desktop appliances for the home. Peter Basilier, a 3D printer researcher at Gartner, told me this focus on the consumer market did not serve the general population's understanding of what was actually going on, especially since its advocates were prone to hyperbole. It's the world of 3D printing and it's going to change everything. Of course, it doesn't help that tech media loves bluster and oversimplification. But away from the media-fueled excitement, serious people were doing serious research. Universities, big businesses, even governments. And the most exciting and useful developments weren't for hobbyists looking to print out busts of their cats, but industrial manufacturers trying to save money and increase efficiency. Terry Wallers, whose annual report on 3D printing is a big deal in the industry, told me that in that realm, the professional manufacturing realm, the 3D printing revolution is happening right now. Companies like General Electric, Hewlett Packard, Boeing, even Nike have integrated 3D printing into their workflow, not as some sort of gimmick, but because it's good for the bottom line. That's sort of the beauty of talented business people. They ignore all the noise, the ups and downs of the hype cycle, and they focus on the underlying technology. And 3D printing technology has its advantages. A big one is that it enables easy prototyping. Basilier told me this is the primary use of industrial 3D printers. Basically, research and development departments can get a tangible sample product without having to design and build expensive molds and make a big upfront investment. Plus, they can do the prototyping in-house, no need for an outside firm. And if they need to make adjustments and incorporate feedback, they can do it right away. Companies can even give these prototypes to their sales teams to see if there are any potential customers. All this allows new ideas to fail fast, which is way better than failing slow. Another advantage, 3D printers are particularly good at printing odd geometric shapes that are impossible to manufacture as one solid piece through a traditional process. For instance, a few years ago, General Electric started using 3D printed fuel nozzles in their jet engines. Traditionally, these fuel nozzles were made up of 20 different component parts and assembling them was an intricate challenge. The 3D printed version, however, is just one piece, eliminating the possibility of human error. Not only that, but they're 25% lighter, which means there's fuel savings. Keep in mind, this is big business for GE. They've reported some $80 billion in jet engine sales. Another great feature of 3D printing, they're a lifeline for businesses in isolation. If you need a spare part, but you're on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean, you can't just use Amazon Prime. Well, maybe when the drone fleet arrives, but not right now. Actually, speaking of science fiction-y stuff, there's a company aptly named Made in Space that, well, specializes in 3D printers that work in zero gravity. That's a tremendous advance because astronauts have to travel with so many tools and spare parts in case of an emergency. The zero gravity 3D printer is a way to lighten the payload, again, saving fuel. And think of the implications for settling Mars. You can't bring everything to a far off planet, but you can bring the machine that can make everything. I can go on and on about industrial 3D printing applications, the customized prosthetics, the quickly built homes, the precise dental implants. But now I'm realizing the irony of starting this piece by shit talking the hype cycle, and here I am, pretty hyped. And to be fair, there are still some problems. I spoke to two researchers, Jaime Bonin Raka and Parth Vaishnav, who interviewed dozens of manufacturers, engineers, and business leaders, and published a paper that identified some significant issues with 3D printing. For instance, regulators the world over require parts to be tested for safety, especially in the aerospace and automobile industries. 
but there's no established playbook on how to test 3D printed items. So the industry has to create its own systems and importantly, prove to regulators that they're effective. That's time consuming and expensive. The researchers also told me not to underestimate the training and expertise required to design and produce products for 3D printing. Despite what we were told on the Colbert report, it's not as simple as pressing a button and the design requires special software. And perhaps that's the lingering negative impact of all that hype. We were told this tech was easy to use. So when people started experimenting with it and discovered it was actually a bit of a pain in the ass, they got frustrated and wrote it off. In other words, many of us, including professional manufacturers, were introduced to the technology without the caveat that it still had a long way to go. It's like reading a draft of a book and assuming the final product won't be any better. But the technology has been improving. Corporate investments in the space are up, so are sales. And perhaps more importantly, a new generation is being trained on 3D printing. Every expert I spoke to pointed out that it's not uncommon for high schools, universities, and community colleges to teach 3D printing. When those students become professional engineers, they can rely on that experience to not only have a better understanding of how to troubleshoot, but they'll have more realistic expectations. Relatedly, one of my guiding philosophies in life is to always under promise. In my humble opinion, it's much better to exceed modest expectations than to fail to meet unrealistic ones. So maybe 3D printing isn't gonna change the world, whatever the hell that means, but it seems on pace to improve it, somewhat. Wohler's estimated it can account for 5% of global manufacturing. That might sound like a small number, but it accounts for hundreds of billions of dollars. That's significant. So the story of the 3D printer revolution is a reminder. Just because something doesn't live up to the expectations right away doesn't mean it's a failure. The fate of a technology is often unpredictable, and we shouldn't confuse hype with the real story. Okay, I'm gonna go live my life.